Good morning. Good Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday morning to you. <laughs> How you doing this morning? I hope you're having a good week. Now that you got Monday by, I don't know. Monday's just another day of the week. Doesn't really make a big difference. It's our attitude. We talked about that yesterday, right? Well, I hope you had a good Monday. I had a pretty good Monday. I was busy. Man, I was busy. Anyway, cooking for Chris and stuff. Man. Anyway, I hope you had a good Monday, and I hope you're having a good Tuesday. And I hope you have a good week this week, too. Yep, might as well plan it, right? Plan for it. Anyway, uh, to this see, Thursday night, I think we think either this Thursday or next Thursday will be our last First John Bible study Zoom class, right? Now, to, it's going to be over either this week or next week. I think we can finish this Thursday. Aunt Mary said, nope, no way. <laughs> it's going to take two to do chapter five. <laughs> we are to chapter five. So if you haven't joined in, you can look at it, the videos here on Facebook. You can run over to YouTube and they're all in one they're all in one folder over on YouTube. And so you can just watch through all of them as we just go. Th we just we just kind of worked our way through first, John. What's next, you ask? Well, I have some things I'm working on. I, I don't have a Bible study coming up yet, uh, but I do have some things I'm working on. And so we'll see how they kind of start to unfold and uh, I'm, I'm looking at um, I'm just looking at some different options and I'm working on a couple I'm working on several different options but anyway we'll we'll I'll make some announcements regarding those later and uh, hopefully we'll see some cool things coming in the near future I hope it's the near future I gotta get myself in gear I am in gear it's just going slower than I like I like to have an idea and then do it but it doesn't always happen that way it kind of gets to unfold over time right <laughs> and, th and that's where that's where we get lost is when things unfold over time you know god prophesied jesus would come he started in the garden when he told eve you know that your seed is going to crush the head of the serpent a woman doesn't have a seed the man has the seed right and yet a virgin was going to bear christ we read about that in December. We'll wait till December. We can't read that till December, right? That's the Christmas story. And so, and the virgin conceived because God put Christ in her womb, and He had to enter the earth through human means and become our sacrifice. But He prophesied it in the garden that Jesus was going to come. But it was years before He actually came. And then he came as a baby and had to grow up for 30 more years, right? And so sometimes we get discouraged because the things we hope for or the things that we feel like God has shared with us or told us don't happen immediately. But rarely does that happen. Rarely does he say it. And it's, it's already done in eternity. It's already done in in the in God's purposes and plans, but we have to wait for it to come into time, and wait. You have to wait for time to match eternity. And I will not get off on time, but I am working on some of that anyway. And so, I think that's where we get discouraged sometimes, right? Here we are, almost three years out from the start of the pandemic. Not quite three years, two and a half years, a little over two and a half years, two and three fourths years from the start of the pandemic, and. Uh, I guess it's more like two and a half. Anyway, we're we're and we I think we thought we were going to wake up and it was going to be gone, right? And yet we're still working through all of these details. We're still working through. There's still people getting COVID right now. It seems like it's better in the sense that the symptoms aren't quite as bad for some. Some still have some horrible symptoms, you know. And there's still some deaths. There's still some hospitalizations. I have a friend whose son just got out of the hospital with COVID. He has a brain injury like Chris does, and and he just he had COVID. He's been in the hospital because his oxygen was low and his I guess his heart rate was low. But you know, so there's still it's still out there. I think we thought it was just going to be gone. We're going to wake up. You know, oh, there's a pandemic on Monday, and it's going to be gone by Friday, and it's not. Here we are, two and a half years later, and we're still doing peace out because we can still peace out, right? And and we're and I think and sometimes we think something's just going to happen really fast. Nothing happens really fast. You don't get a college degree in a day. You go through this class, and then you take this class. Even if you take a fast course, I have friends who did a college degrees. Some of them did them really early. Friends and family who finished them really quick and got through them, but they still it still took time. And I think time sometimes is our biggest sometimes is our biggest discourager because even if God gives us a promising word, you know, and we grab a scripture, it's better for right now. 
but sometimes it still takes the process still takes time and during that time is where we lose it during that time is where we start doubting did he really give me peace did he really leave his peace here for me did he really say this right and so during that that t the time can sometimes be what causes us to lose hold of what God's given us because you know we we know he's given us peace but then as the day goes on things chip away at that if we're not careful if we don't protect it and let it rain right then over time it it start we start questioning right and so you know we look at the story look at all of our stories we we read these stories in the bible these true stories of real people that really happen and and we we read them in a matter, matter depending on your reading abilities you may read it in 30 minutes or two hours it doesn't matter but we still we only read it in a short time we read three or four chapters here uh and we read the book of daniel what's that about 13 chapters i think we could read that in maybe half an hour to an hour if you're a quick reader or maybe two hours even if you read slowly right and we don't realize that was 70 years because <laughs> at the end of the book he's going he says okay god promised Jeremiah, we would be here 70 years, and I've been counting up. It's been 70 years, so he had to have been in his, probably his 80s if he was in his late teens even when he was taken captive, even early teens when he was taken captive. He was a young man, we know, and we read the book of Daniel and, and all that goes on in the book of Daniel and all the different kings that came up and came down. And we read that in 30 minutes or an hour, and then we don't realize that was 70. He lived 70 years of of daniel of the captivity and he he knew god had promised that they would only be in captivity 70 years and at the end he goes i'm reading what you told jeremiah god and this time it's been 70 years you said 70 years and i'm standing on that but he lived that 70 years in captivity as a slave and sometimes we lose that time element right we we read jesus is born he's 12 he's in the temple boom he's 30 and he started his ministry, and we, we forget that he lived those years in between, right? Even Moses, we have Moses, the baby, put in the, the bulrushes, saved in the river because his mama was, was too stubborn to let him die and be killed by the enemy. And, you know, the same enemy that was the same force that was behind the king killing the Hebrew children back then is the same force working in the world today to try to abort babies now. He must know something good is coming because he always attacks babies. Did the same thing when Jesus was born. Go kill all the children under two years of age because I know there's a king coming, right? So maybe the king is coming. I'm ready, but we got to live the time in between, right? And so Moses is in the ba is a baby. He's in the, the bulrushes. Then he's raised by Pharaoh's daughter in the in the palace and now all of a sudden he's grown and he kills the Egyptian because he still has the, the people of God in his heart and now he's in the backside of the wilderness and God's talking to him but we read those two or three chapters in 15 20 minutes and forget there was 30 years in there we could read all of Exodus and, and not realize how many years were in all of this even the plagues how long did they take I think they went pretty fast but they walked through it and that time element is what wears away at our hope the time element is what wears away at our peace that time element is what wears away at at our trust of God because we can get up in the morning well, I don't know about you but I can get up in the morning going yeah this is the day the Lord has made and then it's like bam 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 ah <laughs> and I've lost it I've got all the hope right I've got all the peace I've got all the joy I, I know he loves me and then bam 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 all these things come and by evening I'm going I don't even know why I don't even exist right <laughs> because time wears away at it you know, you look up all of a sudden one day and you're 62 and you're going, I've lived six decades. What happened? Wow. <laughs> you know, and I look at all my friends having grandparents. I go, oh, they're such a sweet looking grandpa. Wait a minute. I'm the same age, right? <laughs> and so, but time wears away. So we have to go back to that root. You have to capture it in our thoughts because our thoughts is what? goes crazy with us right now this is not anything I was even thinking about sharing what I wanted to share is this in Jeremiah 29 11 we talked about it for a minute yesterday God told Jeremiah I know the thoughts I think toward you says the Lord thoughts of 
peace, not evil, to give you future and a hope. And he, he says, God says, I'm thinking thoughts about you. I'm thinking I want to give you peace and hope. God doesn't think any differently in 2022 than he did way back whenever this was written in Jeremiah. I don't even know what year it would have been. 80 something, right? <laughs> BC, BC something. When, but God doesn't think any differently. Matter of fact, you know, the psalmist David says that. We, we talked we talked about this a lot too. And he says in one, Psalm 139, 17, how precious are your thoughts toward me God's thoughts toward me how great is the sum of them if I could count them there would be more than the number of the sand of the sea He's, he says your thoughts and so all we know that there's many thoughts about us and they're all about peace and hope you know God's not setting up their thinking let me see how I can mess up Jeannie's day today <laughs> watch her squirm no he's thinking okay no matter what comes you've got my peace his thoughts are about peace and hope. I'm sending you know, all through the all through the Old Testament. He was telling everyone, "I'm just going to send the Messiah. Keep looking for him. I'm going to send him, but he's got to get that right entry into time so that time and eternity can can collapse in together and be fulfilled, right? And so he's like, he's he's coming, and now he's still telling us he's coming. And so we have to focus our thoughts. God focuses his thoughts on our peace, our hope, on eternity, and we've got to do the same thing. We've got to focus our thoughts on what God has said, whether we see it or not. You know, for me, and one, this is one thing I'm studying because of one, um, I'm, one, I'm working on a women's retreat, an online women's retreat, and, and I, I want us to see ourselves in, in God's image. And, and so I, that's what I've been studying lately. And I'm like, I don't see myself that way. I see myself sometimes, this isn't the proof, it's, it, it comes up, right, as rejected or abandoned or, you know, and I was talking to someone yesterday and I was like, you're always seeing yourself as a victim. Stop being the victim take you know take that back you don't have to be the victim you're always the victim and 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 so i you know i have to go see what god thinks about me god doesn't see us as victims he sees us as victors he sees us with as houses of his holy spirit and that holy spirit is powerful right his, his holy spirit lives in us when we get saved we we have of his spirit and and we he's empowered us to walk out his promises in time his promises of, of a future, his promise of hope. And so time wears away at our, in our thinking of, from, and it wears away at hope. It wears away at if I'm really loved. It wears away at does God really provide. It can, it can, things start attacking us and we have to bring our thoughts back into his thinking. We have to sometimes just stop and go, God loves me. Say that out, if nobody's sitting there. Nobody's sitting there, say that out loud to yourself. God loves me. If they are, just say it in your head, God loves me. I mean, they don't think you're crazy. It's okay if they think you're crazy too, but God loves me. God has thoughts of peace about me. God wants to give me hope. That's what his thoughts are. His thoughts are, I love you so much, I can't be without you. Let me make a way. And he made a way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? And he made that way because he didn't want to be without you and so we have to let his thoughts prevail over our thoughts because our thoughts start where our thought my thoughts now yours may not do this my thoughts go 90 to nothing and and they go here and there and somewhere else you know i told you before my friend mary says i got a google mind you just say one phrase and i've got 20 20 tabs 50 tabs open go which way do you want to go <laughs> i can take it any way you want to go right and that's how my mind works all day long sometimes i'm exhausted just from thinking for real and so I have to take those thoughts and go, okay, I'm going to come back and think what God thinks. God thinks you are worthy of dying for. God thinks you have a hope. Can you think that too? God thinks you have peace. Why? Because he gave it to you. Can you think that too? So I want to think about the way God thinks about me today. Thinking of hope, peace, love, joy kingdom of God he gave us the kingdom of God you can say I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God wow that's pretty cool right so today focus on what he thinks about you his love for you his he's given you his peace he, the kingdom of God is righteousness peace joy and the Holy Ghost that's right 
That's good stuff. Let's think about his thoughts today. I encourage you to do that. Have a great day, you guys. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow.